very special welcome to another wonderful day again. It is start time of the day when we actually take you around the world of sport. And today I'm going to be taking you around the world of sport, bringing you to details, bringing you the details. I beg your pardon of everything happening from the world of sport. My name is uh, MC Ramsey with Jesse number 10. It's been a very wonderful time. And of course, uh, moving from what uh, uh, transpired between uh, the ladies and of course, Brazil. My God, that game, did you really watch it? Did you see how it actually went? Uh, what about uh, the transfer window and everything happening uh, from the world of transfer? And apart from that, uh, let me also uh, let you know what is happening right now. Of course, uh, uh, from... Oh, my God. The precision is on. And so much happening from there. These are the areas we would be looking at uh, today. And joining me on the conversation is uh, a very, very wonderful sport analyst. Uh, Philips Uja is right uh, uh, here and is going to be joining me via the phone this morning. Good morning, Philips. Uh, good morning, Ramsey. Good morning, viewers at home. It's nice to be here. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me quickly... Uh, ask you this question right now. I want to start from uh, the match that happened yesterday. Uh, the Super Falcons. Some people were actually missing in action and uh, the performance, some person said, <laughs> the, the description that came from fans was so much. I don't know. What do you think about that match? Losing to Brazil. What, did, is it giving you some kind of pointer or you feel it's normal? Well, losing to Brazil for me, I think it's normal because um, Brazil, we know they are superpowers when it comes to female football. So I don't think we would have expected to win Brazil. What we should have done was just like the damage control. And I think we did the damage control by not losing scandal loss. Because if you asked me before the beginning of the Olympics, I said it. Even the brother station, when I officiated, I told them that the Nigeria don't have a chance of making it out of that group. The best we can get out of that group is best losers. Mm. And that is just the truth. So it's like that will become realistic rather than being patriotic or being sentimental or using a kind of tribalism to judge what we can achieve. These girls, don't we the days where we used to lose um like seven nil, five nil or four nil. So for them to have lost one nil to me, I think that is a fair result because I never see us winning in Brazilian. I'm sure we can see the match. Uh, when we started, we started the game very calmly, as if we were going to get something out of it. But before we could enter the second half, the whole game changed. And then we saw how the, just the long goal they scored, they held on to it, and we could not um, come back from it. And then we lost that game. And I'm sure that our next match, Japan is more, much more tougher than this, because Japan is also a good team. They also lost narrowly to Spain. So, Coming to play us or playing Spain is going to be a very difficult one for us. So, to me, I think um, our girls, they have got fun, enjoy themselves, and then uh, come back or go back to their club side and continue their football. But for us, getting any good thing out of this Olympic, for me, I'm not, I'm not in that uh, school of thought. Hello, Phillips. Come again. I said um, I you. the chances of Nigeria. Uh, uh, generally, as it has to do with other sports and the Olympics, what do you think about the Olympics? You know, um, sometimes uh, people don't get interested watching this game, especially when we don't have um, uh, some people featuring in major games. What's the chances of Nigeria as far as um, the Olympics is actually concerned? Well, um, for the Olympics, um, I think um, we have chances in so many sports. We have some fair chances in athletics. Uh, because when we talk about the likes of Toby Amucho, all these um, Sevo and the uh, Ophili and the rest of them in the athletics events, we might have some fair chances both in the hurdles and uh, maybe 4 by 100 or personal 100 or 200 meters. You understand? Even um, Uzi Ukuchi, the one of the, the short putter, uh, she also has given us some hope because he, he coming fresh from the African Championship. When he won us some medal. So I think, um, by and large, we are going to have fair chances competing again. But I think, but mind, this is the Olympics. You yeah. Know? When you go to the Olympics, you, are, you tend to meet, just like the World Cup, you meet all the countries from all the different continents. So you see, it's going to be a very difficult one. But by and large, I see us coming home with maybe a few medals, you know, like four or five medals. Wow. But I can't determine which category is going to be. 
All right, I think that that is fair enough. If we come home with um that number of medal, I think uh, it's fair enough because we're talking about Olympics here. Yeah, like you said, a lot of people are coming from other countries, and um. A lot of people are coming from other countries and majority of them are experts. So if they come back with um four or five medals. Considering the fact that it's Olympic, but um if you check the ratio of the medal to the athletes we are presenting, some might say it is poor because I learned we are taking over is the two athletes minus the three footballers. So and maybe some of the uh, this thing we still have about um Fifty or fifty something athletes to compete individually. Mm. So if you ask me, if you compete in fifty something sport, and you could only get five medal, uh, your judging should is as good as mine. So my system it as poor, but you know we are Africans. Um, the best uh, team that have always been performing well from Africa when it comes to Olympics has always been South Africa. Mm. And most of these medals they win are uh, usually in uh, swimming and the rest. But you can see that in Nigeria we are not that good in swimming. So um, that is what it is. But just hope for the best. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Philip, for that. Uh, let's leave Nigeria a little bit and talk about uh, things happening from the world of transfer. How far has it been in the world of transfer? So many things surrounding uh, the transfer of uh, Victor Osimen. Some persons are saying, uh, well, uh, maybe the owners are trying to play uh, some kind of uh, what Nigerians call Ojoro. And um, the, the pricing is something else. And of course, um, Osimen right now, as at um, a few days ago, it was PSG, um, not, people were not even talking about PSG anymore, you know. And um, the whole thing, the back and forth is so much, that's for Simen. Then other transfers going on and uh, the different clubs, their preparations as they get ready for the upcoming season. What would you have to say about the transfer generally? Well, um... For Victor Simen, I uh, actually I saw it coming. Why? Because um, if you observe, the Simen, the guys better say, um, make sure why the sun shines. Last season, the season before this one that just ended, it was all on song in Europe. I think it was about the hottest striker in Europe, him and Eli Haaland. That's because the number of goals he scored and helping um, Napoli to the, to the quarter final of the Champions League and also winning the Serie A and so over. After the three decades or there about, so if he if he has if he was to have moved then, I think um, he would have cut that amount that the club is placing on him. But you know this European club just like them, uh, the value drops. Yeah. So now they felt the cement value has dropped, and that is why the money uh, the police is demanding for no club is ready to pay that yes. such kind of money. The money um, PSG is offering to give him, the coach, the owner says he's not interested. Mm. That wants more than that. Or if he's going to accept that he wants uh, that Korean guy to be involved in the deal. But PSG is not willing to give in. The same thing with Chelsea. Chelsea were almost in the race. But what Napoli is demanding for is the player plus cash. Mm -hmm. and Napoli wants Lukaku and then Chelsea will not add more. But for kind of like Chelsea, they don't want that. They want separately. And also want, um, what is it called? Uh, um, Lukaku to be also be bought separately. They don't want the deals to be combined big. And then the owners are not just ready for that. I think that is why we're having this back and forth. At the end of the day, it might be unlikely that we'll see a team moving to probably maybe the Saudi Arabian League. And uh, well, for me, that, uh, that I don't fancy that happening because um, it's too young to move, if you ask me. Exactly. But, if he, but it's, it's too young to move. But you know, football, just like um, we, back then, we knew that uh, football is all about um, what you can make now. Because there's no pension attached to it. From what is likely to happen is that Osime might force his way, maybe try to buy out his remaining contract with same player, do stuff like that, buying out their contract when it becomes total because he might refuse to play for the team. It happened with um, Mbappe. He froze himself out of the team, he refused coming for training and all of that. He might decide to force his move because I know he won't be happy staying in Napoli any longer because the owner himself, I think the coach have told him is not in his plan. So it's better for him to look for a club somewhere else. But, but Saudi Arabia, uh, you, what do you think? Because you were trying to say something about Saudi Arabia. Do you, do you think um, going to Saudi Arabia would be the best for him? I know money is involved and a lot of people play because of the money. But now, his age and his career, don't you think it's too early? Well, going to Saudi Arabia, I don't think it would be cool for him because he's quite too young. He's just 25 years old. Um, in Saudi Arabia, we knew uh, for players that 
uh, like 29, 30 or thereabouts. But you know, this is money. Football, just like I said, um, it was Anthony Jada told us back then that football has no pension. So that was when he moved to China. So if he wants to move and uh, money might also be a tempting factor because I learned what PSG is demanding that the Saudi Arabian uh, club are willing to pay. Mm. You understand? So at times it's Too much money. money. But uh, for seamen, you want to consider his career. Because if he moves to Saudi Arabia, I bet you he might not be rated, uh, be nominated for African Best anytime soon. Yes. So he might want to stay in Europe to remain relevant. You understand? So I feel more club might still come for him. Don't be surprised. Maybe it seems like Arsenal. I just, just that the money they're asking is too much. But if they can cover that money, Arsenal is also a good team. I would have loved to see him play for, if not for PSG. All right. Um. Finally, before I let you go, um, how do you think the teams are faring so far, uh, in this preseason? Well, um, in preseason, uh, some teams have played barely two matches. Um, Man United played. We saw them. We saw their news as you and then we saw how he has blended, how he has played, how he played in the team. We also saw Chelsea. We saw um Arsenal. Uh, I watched Arsenal two days back. I also watched Chelsea early. Early in the day of the, um, on, on Wednesday, um, but to me, the, 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 for Chelsea, I'm not being convinced with what the so-called new Italian Pep Guardiola is doing. As Enzo Maresca, I'm not happy <laughs> with the what I saw uh, because um, just the same way we saw Chelsea last season, the firepower in the attack is still not there. But I'm surprised that up to now, Chelsea have not gone for an A-list top nine. Because I, I, for one, I would have think that since they know that they one of their major challenges last season was getting the goals. Because you know that uh, Jackson is not just there. You would have made your priority right, set your priority yes. straight. Go for a point man. You get a number nine that you know that this one is going to deliver for me. But Chelsea is not just doing that. And all they have been going for are midfielders, and they went and bought a certain Magui from Barcelona and the rest of that. I mean, the, the coach or a team that is hungry for trophies or hungry. For, for for good things. I don't think they'll be turning around buying one or two players that are not A list players. Why not go for one of these current hot strikers in Europe? Of course, this is Chelsea we are talking about. Despite the fact that they're now playing the Champions League, you can see that they were, they, they were nominated for the FIFA World Club, mm. World Club Cup. That shows that they are still a big team in Europe. Understand? So that uh, for now, I'm thinking they should have gone for quality striker. All I'm seeing them going for, to me, they are not top strikers. The same thing goes for us now. As now, I saw the way they played, they drew the match and then they won via penalty. Yeah, for City, we can make a case for City. Yes, they lost 4-3 to Celtic, the Scottish um, champion. But I think their own loss is understandable because about 80% of their uh, first team players, they all played in the Euros and they're not right back. So that one is well understood. But for this other team, they have a bulk of their players intact. But yet, they are, they, they, they are not giving us the convincing. The Man United won their match and I think um, the coach is... So to me, somehow, he's beginning to have a good um, understanding of the team. And we want to see how the season pans out. Uh, it's, it's, as some will say, it's too early to call because this is just the preseason. But at times from the preseason, we'll know how the season is going to be like. All right. Thank you very much, Philip, for joining us on Sport Rush today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. As a matter of fact, this is going to be the size of the sport rush today. Uh, Phillips has spoken very well and um, he has made us to understand that uh, some of the clubs, some of the teams are not doing what they're supposed to do, not getting the players they are supposed to get, especially uh, Chelsea. And of course, the preseason games going on, he has also said, well, uh, other teams are not matching up to expectation except for uh, Manchester City that were given a little consideration because most of their big players, actually like 80%, like he said, went out for Euro and uh, of course they have not returned back and that was why uh, Celtic uh, uh, would have to win the Scottish Cup. Alright, so uh, this is going to be the size of a spot rush for Friday. Today we'll come on the way again and I want to say keep your fingers crossed. Just um, keep watching and uh, keep listening to everything that has to do with sport because something good is about happening from the world of sport and I tell you that uh, this forthcoming season is going to be very very superb because uh, a lot of things are going down but then Osimen, what's the hope of Osimen? do you want Osimen to go to Saudi Arabia or you want him to come to England wherever and whatever it is you will get to know on this platform my name is MC Ramsey with Jesse number 10 bye bye for now and have a wonderful weekend ahead of you.